The Bible says write the vision and make it plain. And I'm going to explain to you exactly how to do that next. Greg Fritz Ministries wants to give you a free booklet entitled Get Your Vision Back that accompanies this television series as our gift to you. To receive your free printed copy of this booklet, call us at 918-878-8000. To download the ebook version, visit our website at gregfritz.org. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. I love Greg. I love the way he teaches faith and the way he teaches healing. It's phenomenal. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. Because he delivers the word of God with such warmth and balance and great clarity. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are continuing our series, Get Your Vision Back. And I felt very prompted to do this series right now and get it out to you because I just be believe people are becoming discouraged. Maybe as they look at the future, they're concerned about what they see. And when that happens, we're tempted to pull back. We're tempted to give in. And I want to encourage you not to do that. And there was a, a man, a prophet, Habakkuk, in the Old Testament who had this same experience. And he looked around and things were bad and getting worse. And he poured out his heart to God. And God dealt with Habakkuk and helped him get his vision back. And we're going through his book uh, in the Old Testament because if he could get his vision back, we can get ours back. And I'll explain to you exactly what that means, but I want to get you caught up to where we are right now. Uh, Habakkuk made this plea to God uh, and basically he's saying things are so bad and you don't seem to be doing anything. And maybe you felt like that before. Um, and then the Lord started to deal with Habakkuk. And I, I would like for you to go read the book of Habakkuk. That's a homework assignment. It's only three chapters. And so you can read through it, but you'll see this process. And then as I teach, uh, you know, go through these verses and these principles, it'll make more sense. So um, if you're able to pause this program and read through it, fine. If not, read it after afterward. But, um, and, and if I had a, a, a literal classroom, I would do a poll, a pop quiz and say, how many of you have read the book of Habakkuk? And uh, so I hope you would pass that test. Uh, but if not, you can read it and uh, you'll be ready for the next one. So uh, Habakkuk poured out his heart to God. And I'm not going to read that again. It's verses one through four of chapter one. And then God began to deal with him to help him to, to, to get his zeal for life back, to get his vision back, to get his faith back. He was actually in a hopeless position and that's no place for a person of God to be. So the first thing God said was, uh, I am able to do a work. He said, look among the nations and be utterly astonished. I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe though it were told you, you wouldn't believe it. In other words, God's saying, don't leave me out of this equation. Just because you don't see me working doesn't mean I'm not going to do something or I'm not working behind the scenes. Don't give up on God and whatever you're going through, Whatever your future looks like right now, I just want to encourage you not to give up on God. Faith in God is the most important, uh, you know, part of the equipment that we have to run the race that's before us, to run with vision. It's so important not to give up on God. He's able to do what he said he would do in your life. And so the second point he makes is in Habakkuk 2, verse 2, he says, write the vision. This is God speaking to us, to Habakkuk. He says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And so really the key to living life in this day or any day is to be running with a vision, run with, with promises from God, run with a purpose, run knowing where you're going what you're headed for. And I can give you several different uh, visions that you can run with, but really any promise that God has made to you through his word or by his spirit would be a, a, a part of the vision you run with. And can I just tell you that nothing that's happened on this planet and 
uh, in this nation has changed God's uh, determination, His promise, His ability, or, or what God has said to you. If you have promises from God in your life that He's made to you about your family, your nation, your future, your ultimate future, uh, you can count on those and you can run the race that's set before you with confidence. Don't give up. One of the things that happens to us as we live for God is we're tempted to, because it, it takes time. Running a race takes time. This isn't a sprint, if you haven't figured that out. It's a marathon. And so you have to have a different mentality to run a marathon. And one of the things that he's telling us to do is remind yourself of what God has told you to do. And this kind of helps with meaning and purpose. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you getting out of bed every day? Maybe you're doing it for the wrong reason. Um, you know, it, without a vision, without some kind of heavenly meaning in your life, some kind of heavenly promise, uh, life can be, seem to be unfair and, uh, you know, cruel and unusual punishment. But when you have a vision, it, it makes a difference. You know, athletes train and they do some severe things to their bodies and they, they, they do things that normal people wouldn't do. The only reason that they're up at four in the morning running in the rain is because they have vision. Now, I don't have that kind of vision. I'll just tell you right now, uh, there isn't anything in this life in the natural that's going to get me up at four in the morning to run in the rain. But they have a different vision than I do. Uh, I have to deal with different um, opposition than they do. But it, the point is, anyone who who is successful and moves forward day by day in their life has some kind of vision. There's a reason they're doing it. And that might be wrong. They may be doing it out of greed or selfishness or pride or the lust for fame or some ungodly reason. But vision is a powerful thing. And so once God gives you a promise and, and assuming that God has given you promises, and if he hasn't, I'll give you some, uh, we, we need to remind ourselves of those things and run with that vision. You know, Jesus ran with vision. He ran with purpose. Let me show you. In, in Hebrews 12, 2, it says, We should look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Why? Because he, he completed his course. He ran his race. But he's telling us right here, Jesus didn't just come do what he did uh, because he felt like it. He did it because there was a vision. There was a goal. There was something to accomplish. And that enabled him because the goal, the finish line was so appealing and so important and so precious to him, he was able to run with joy. And, and that's saying something because he had a lot of opposition, a lot of persecution, a lot of people hated him. And I'm sure Jesus is like anyone else. He had human emotions and feelings. And there were days when he thought, what? I'm just, you know, no one likes me. No one gives me any credit. Everyone hates me and I haven't done anything wrong. And he, he could have been tempted to feel sorry for himself, but he wasn't. It says, who for the joy that was set before him, he was able to stay in this attitude of joy and expectancy, even though he faced literally ungodly opposition and uh, illogical opposition. How do you hate someone when all they do is good and help and heal and bless? And yet he was hated. I mean, to the point they wanted to kill him. Boy, you, you talk about ungrateful. Um, he came to save the world and the world literally killed him for it. Uh, he had a lot of reasons to be at least disappointed, disillusioned, but no, because of the joy that was set before him, that was you and me. He, he, he saw us in his future and he was doing it for us. So he was able to run and, and get up at four in the morning and run in the rain, whatever it took. He was willing to do whatever it took. And uh, it's so easy over time to lose that edge. And that's why I'm making this series. I want to help you get the edge back. Uh, why are you doing what you're doing? 
Here's, here's a, a, a sobering scripture in Proverbs 29, 18 in the King James. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And the, the New King James says, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. And that's a great way to describe what happens when your vision gets impaired or clouded or you forget what it is, you forget why you're doing what you're doing. You know, a lot of us have set our course. We've st started out in the will of God and the plan of God and, and we're, we're f far enough along that this is what we do. This is who we are. And sometimes you can forget, well, why am I here? What? And it was so clear in the beginning. But if you don't keep that before your eyes, it's, it's easy to, and that's a tactic of the enemy to make you think nobody cares. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You don't get any appreciation and nothing is going right in your life. What's the purpose? What's the point of this? The point is there's a finish line. There's a race to run. We can live by faith every day and that means something to God. Yeah, you may not be able to finish today and you may not be able to change the world you live in today right now by yourself, but you can live another day in faith. You can live another day in joy, in expectation of the future. And you can count on God that God is going to do in your life, in your family, in your nation, whatever God has promised you. And it's so important to remember that day by day and be reminded of it. And that's what we're doing here. And so, uh, you know, I use this illustration. High school would be considered cruel and unusual punishment if you took graduation out of the equation. Let's just say you're in high school. You forget that it's four years if you do well enough and there is no such thing as graduation. So what do you do? You go to class, you listen to lectures, you read, you study, you take tests. And then what do you do? You go back to class, you listen to lectures, you read, you study, you do homework, you write papers, you take tests, and hopefully you pass. And then what do you do? You go back to class, you don't have, maybe you, you're not popular or whatever happens, all the drama that goes along with high school is happening all around you, and you go to class. At some point, if you don't have the vi vision of the future, of a promise. They made us a promise when we started high school. And the promise was, if you work hard enough, you can graduate. And that helped us go through the motions. And it helped us realize, okay, I'm doing this, but it's not forever. I'm going to graduate one day and I'm going to move on and I'm going to have a career and I'm going to have a family and I'm going to build something in life and I'm going to do something positive and I'm going to have responsibility and I'm going to have freedom and I'm going to have my own car. And there are so many things that go along with it that help us stay the course in high school. Can I just encourage you? Don't lose that in real life. Nothing has changed other, other than it's probably going to take more than four years. It, it may have taken some of you more than four years to get through high school, and that's okay. But life itself is going to take more than four years. But it doesn't change the principle. It doesn't change the process. We get a promise. We get a vision. You know what? Life is a gift from God. And if you found Christ and you found God in your life, you have everything to live for. You have something to look forward to. And I'll give you, I'll give you a vision. How about heaven? You, God's made that promise to every one of us. And you may have lost your career. You may have retired from your job. Your family may be deceased. You may not have anyone left in your life, but you know what? You still have heaven to look forward to. You can still please God for another day by believing him. You can still be salt and light by supporting good causes, by supporting, by voting and praying and being a good witness in your community and in your church. There are plenty of things <clears throat> that you can do to get your vision back and to remember, why did I start this to begin with? Because I'm going to tell you, there's nothing new under the sun. And the things that the enemy tempted Habakkuk with, the things that he, that he tempts and, and, and tries to uh, dissuade Jesus with, the things that he uses on me, they're the same things he uses on you. We're all facing the same opposition and we can all do this. Uh, you uh, will never be allowed to be tempted beyond what you're able to bear. 
And so it's time maybe to, to step back and say, wait a minute, let me just remind myself of what God promised me at an altar or in my prayer room or when I was younger or what God told me about my family, my lost uh, loved ones, my, my future, my career, my finances. Remind yourself of these things. He told Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. So if you're running without reading it, Man, you're, you're just going through the motions, and that's not how we were made to live. Let me give you another scripture here. Uh, so Jesus ran with vision, obviously. Paul ran with vision. Look at what Paul said in Philippians 3, verse 13. He said, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So he was saying, I'm running with vision. I'm running for a goal. Are you running for a goal? Do you want to see the promises that God has made to you fulfilled in your life? Promises in his word, yes, but also promises in your, in your personal life. Anything that God has promised you serves as purpose. It's a, it's a promise that God has given you that you are born to run with. You know, we were born to run with purpose. Isn't that great? We, we weren't born to just be robots and just do what we were programmed to do. We were born to do something and be a part of something that's bigger than us, to live for something that lasts longer than this temporary life. And we're all capable of doing this. Don't let the enemy talk you out of your vision. And, you know, I'm just going to insert this here. You don't have to watch commercials on this program because no one sponsors us. <laughs> we pay for it. But let me just say this. If you would like to run with vision, if you'd like to add some vision in your life, you can run with me. You can, you can connect with our ministry and help us. We've got big promises that I believe God has made to us about reaching people that have just begun to unfold. And we're building a team, a partner base, and you can be part of that. We'd love to have you join with us and run with us. You don't have to run by yourself. You can connect with ministries like ours, and there are many good ones. But, but if you're watching this, consider partnering with me. Um, by doing that, you're saying, hey, I'm going to run with you. I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to take some of my finances and invest into what you're doing. And if you'll do that this week, uh, we want to give you this series called Get Your Vision Back as a free partner gift. So partner with us. There are the ways to give her on the screen, or you can call our helpline and say, I want to partner. You can choose a partner level, $25, $50 to $100 a month or more, and we'll send you this plus your other partner gifts and explain the value of partnership. We'll communicate with you every month by mail. We'll send you an email every week if you'd like that uh, because we're sending out emails to connect and keep in touch with our, with our partners. I'll pray for you, and you'll be part of this race, part of this team. Uh, this is what life is all about. You know, when life is over and you do cross that finish line, because you're going to finish. I'm going to finish. We are going to finish. Don't believe the lie. I'm sure there, there comes a point in every marathon runner's race, 26 and a half miles, I believe, where they wonder, am I going to finish this? A am I actually going to finish? Well, some of them may not, but let me tell you this. You are going to finish. I'm going to finish. We are well along in this race, and God is on our side. He's in us. He's on us. He's supporting us. He's promoting us. He's, he's giving us power and vision and, and wisdom. You're going to finish, and when you do, it's going to be partnership like this and things that you do for God that no one knows about, that no one cares about, that are going to be celebrated on the other side. And so partnering with ministry is part of that process. Uh, I partnered with ministries when I was very young, uh, before I even uh, was, was a teenager. As, a, as an elementary school boy, I partnered with ministries. I saw, I began to watch Christian TV, and I began to partner, and uh, it's just been part of my life. It's been a, an honor to run the race with these other ministries. And when you partner, you connect, and you're able to see what they see, and you're able to participate in a real meaningful way in their race. 
And uh, maybe that's something you need in your life, and we want to, we will provide that for you for sure. So uh, Paul ran with vision, just like Jesus. Uh, Jesus ran with vision. Everyone who's received a promise from God and who is born again and, and, and in the kingdom of God is born to run with vision. But here's, the, here's another analogy that I like to use. When, when God gives you a promise, whether it's for your family, your nation, your future, or even heaven itself, uh, which is the ultimate promise, he also gives you the opportunity to carry that promise. In other words, God does things that don't happen instantly. And if, if, you're, if you've taken that as a negative, let me turn that around for you. If, if all of the promises God has made to you have not yet come to pass, that is a good thing. That gives you something to believe for, something to strive for. And we need to believe for something. You know, Abraham believed he was going to have a, a son, e even in his old age. And, uh, you know, David believed he was going to be king. Joseph believed he was going to be lifted up and promoted. Uh, Moses believed he was going to be a deliverer. Everyone in the Bible, Jesus believed he was going to receive an invisible kingdom. Everyone in the Bible that, that that amounted to anything believed in a promise that didn't come to pass right away. And so I liken it to, to a football. When, you know, if you're on a football field and you play football, especially if you're on offense, you want the ball. And whether you're a receiver, a running back, a quarterback, you want that ball. And, but when you get the ball, guess what happens? You become very important on that field. You become a target. And the other team's job is to rob you of that ball. They want to get the ball out of your hands and they will intimidate. It's fun. It's fun to watch football because it's a game. But they trash talk. They try to intimidate. They try to get in each other's space. They try to jump just right in time to, you know, get across the line before the ball snap. And sometimes they're offsides. There's so much that goes on. But every play, the person that has that ball is going to get hit. He's going to get opposed. He's going to get pushed. He's going to get, you know, attacked. And, and that's exactly what happens. When God gives you a promise, you become a target and the enemy can't take it from you. He doesn't have that kind of authority. Thank God. He can't, he can't mug you. He can't, you know, um, kidnap you and hold you for ransom. He, all he can do is try to get you to give up the ball. He, he has to convince you that it's not worth the effort anymore, that you might as well give up. You might as well quit. I mean, as, think about it. You haven't made any yardage in 10 years. You haven't scored in 20 years. You haven't made a touchdown in 20 years. Why don't you just give that up and go sit down? Don't give in to that. That's exactly the reaction you would think you would get from the other team. That's, and especially if they are threatened by you as a human, and they are. Satan wants to stop you. He wants to discourage you. He wants to help you get depressed. He wants you to think it's not worth it. He wants to misrepresent God to you and tell you God's not going to do it. It doesn't work for you. Yes, it's worked for others, but it won't work for you. Don't believe that lie. It's been told a thousand times. Get back in, that, in the game. T tell the quarterback, give me back that ball. Get me back in the game. I want to run another down. I don't care if I fall down. I'm going to get back up and run another day. And, and that's what we get to do, folks. You may not score a touchdown every day, but you get to run another day. You get to try to go forward another yard. You get to carry that promise another day. And, and that is such an honor. You know, it gives us purpose. It gives us a reason to live. And so, you know, I just feel like because things have been so drastic in our world of late that people have misinterpreted that as now it's not going to happen and God's not going to do what he said. And now I surely have a reason to give up. No, you don't. God hasn't changed. His promises have not changed. You can do what God's promised you, you can do. You can be what God's promised you, you can be. As long as you're basing that on a promise from God and not just a, a false assumption. And that's something you have to do. But I can tell you, 
that believing for heaven is for all of us. And that's enough to motivate all of us. Partnering with a ministry, that's something we can all do and say, hey, I want to be involved in something else, something that's beyond myself, something that I can help promote and push over the finish line because, folks, I can't do this by myself. Now, I'm running every day. I've got the ball. I'm facing the opposition. I'm paying the bills to do this without sponsorship, but I can't do it alone. I need people like you to say, hey, I'll help you. I'll get on your team. I'll push you forward. And as I'm pushing you forward, you'll pull me forward. We can do this together. We're really not alone. And because of the miracle of modern technology, I can be anywhere in the world and I can speak to you every day of the week, which is what we're doing. And you can help me expand this reach by becoming a partner so that I can do this for many, many more people. If you don't want to be a partner and you'd still like to get this series, you can. It's on the website. You can get it for an offering of $24 and you specify whether you want a CD or USB and we've offered it also for free as a download. So if you go to the down, if you choose the download part, the, the selection to download it to your computer, enter the code VISION24 at checkout and, and get your free download version of this. But we'd love to have you as a partner and uh, or as as a giver at least when you when you give just a one-time offering your name comes to me and i'm able to thank god for that pray for you and get you on our our mailing list and we love that and that's a good way to to begin a relationship so the ways to give are on the screen take a look at that until then remember this the good news is so good the bad news doesn't matter join us next time for good news with greg fritz and he's able to do it in your life. Then, once you don't, don't count God out and write the vision, remind yourself of what he said, don't give in to these lies that'll come to you along the way. There are, you know, as I've said before, if you were gonna run a marathon, I haven't done that. I don't have that kind of vision. I didn't get that kind of promise from God. God never told me you're gonna run a marathon. Thank God he didn't tell me that. But if I ever did, I'm sure that there are times along the way where you wonder, am I gonna finish? Am I really gonna finish this race? And there are lies that the enemy will tell you. And he, you know, I don't know how sophisticated his system is, but he may have you on a timer and say, you know, at 10 years, tell him this and give them this lie and see if this discourages them. At 20 years, tell them this. And at, at 30 years, tell them this. Say 30 years, yes, we've been believing th some things for 30 years and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm gonna hold on to that ball. I'm gonna run another day. I'm gonna believe God. And as those promises come to pass and they ha have begun, people like you are gonna be blessed uh, because God made me promises about people. And uh, that's my realm, that's my career. Uh, but, but hold on to what God said and then recognize these lies as they come along, as they surely will. It's too anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-economy, the middle class is being wiped out. Uh, the, the circumstances are too bad for God to do what he said he would do with your life.